Only one person is there. Are we all there? Now it says, while Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately and said, tell us, when will this destruction of the temple take place? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end completion, consummation of the urge? Verse 4. Jesus answered, be careful, be careful that no one misleads you, deceiving you and leading you into error. Five. For many will come in my name, mis misusing it and appropriating the strength of the name of which belongs to me, saying, I am the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed, and they will mislead many. Six, you will continually hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened, for those, for those things must take place. But this is not yet the end of the age. Seven, for nation will rise against nations and kingdoms against kingdoms and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. Eight, but all these things are merely the beginning of birth perks of the intolerable anguish and the time of unprecedented trouble. Nine, then they will hand you over to endure tribulation and will put you to death and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Ten, and that time many will be offended and repelled by their association with me and will fall away from the one whom they should trust and will betray one another, handing over believers to their persecutors and will hurt one another. 11. Men false prophets will appear and mislead many. 12. Because lawlessness is increased, the love of most people will grow cold. 13. But the one who endures and bear up under suffering to the end will be saved. Amen. So, you'd understand the importance of knowing the series of events. It is important to understand the series of events. And it is important to understand the magnitude of what is going to happen. So when you read, Jesus already has explained, these are events that are going to happen. And some of them are events that I believe a lot of people have already seen. Many people have already seen and experienced some of the things that are being spoken in this scripture. <laughs> so the question will be, where are we? Because as long as we can get to a place where we can talk about everything else because you would understand Jesus gave guidelines. Praise God. As he was reading, there are notes that I also wrote down. 
he spoke about the signs because the disciples on verse number three, when they went to him, they spoke about signs. They say to him, give us the signs. Because the believers also understood through study and prophecy that everything that has to happen, there has to be signs. There is nothing that happens on this earth without signs. There is nothing that God does without signs. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Before rain comes, you will know. If rain is to come, you will know. How would you know that rain is about to come? Water, water, water. How would you know that rain is to come? Science. The clouds will gather. When the clouds gather, there is a scent you feel. Even before the clouds gather, there is a level of heat that comes first. So there is nothing that God will do without signs. If war is to come, we know that war is coming. If people are to fight, we know that they are about to fight because there has to be quarrels first. Exchange of words. Misunderstandings. Then all of a sudden, out of the misunderstandings, then people will fight. People will fight. So the disciples of Jesus came to him and said, what will be the signs. What will be the signs? And we are, we are going to dive deep into it. I'm going to give you a well detailed one as we go. So the first thing he says, do not be misled on verse number four. Do not be misled, do not be deceived, or do not be brought to error. Meaning that there are going to be a lot of people that love God genuinely. But despite their love for God, they are going to be misled. So Jesus speaks to them and said, do not be misled. It is, it, is, it is an important note to really take down because that, that is where everything begins because it is at this point that Jesus is beginning to explain the signs. And because Jesus, they ask for signs and Jesus is explaining signs, signs. It is the duty of believers to be observant. Uh, Amen. <laughs> now, it becomes the duty of the believer to be observant. That's right. It becomes your duty now. To be observant. All right. We say to be what? Observe. It becomes your duty now that you have to be observant. You have to be observant. Now, In you getting to a place where you become observant, I believe there are many things that one, as a child of God and as a believer, you have to get to a place where you, you know, you open your eyes to. 
your environment, events, atmosphere. Amen. So, if Jesus said that, do not be misled. That's what that scripture is saying, right? On verse 4. Do not be what? Misled. Misled or beware of being misled. It means that, it means that there is a leader. It means that there is a what? There is a leader. Praise God. There is a leader. Because you can never be misled if there is no one leading you. You can never be misled if there's no one leading you. So the warning that Jesus gives first goes to the believers and points out to the leaders. And mind you, the term leader, we are not just talking about a leader of someone who is, who is having a position. Anyone who is leading any sect, any group is categorized as a leader. So a cell group leader can be put on this note. A gang leader can be put on this note. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So after they asked for signs, Jesus now says to them, give me some bass a little bit. Give me some bass a little bit. On live one. Praise God. So when Jesus comes now and he says to them, do not be misled. It means that you have to be careful as far as aspects of leadership are concerned. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. You have to be careful. That's right. You have to be careful. So it means that your eyes now have to be observant. So the first sign Jesus points out is do not be misled. It means you have to look out and be observant at where you are being led. And he said, do not be deceived. And the next thing, he said, do not be put to error. So while you are being led, you have to go back and do a cross-reference. What does the Bible say? Because we are in an age where you realize that purity, the second coming rapture, has been toned down because of movements and preachings that are being brought in. And now you realize that you lose the concept of the future of where you are going as a believer. And you get to a place where sometimes you begin to live a reckless life as far as your work with God is concerned. Which will bring you to a place whereby at the end of the day, you might lose focus because as long as you do not have an insight and focus and carefulness of where you are going, you miss certain things. In your dealings with God. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. So you realize that we are in an age whereby. Even many we have become so materialistic. Not because we came to the house of the Lord materialistic. Jesus says the first sign do not be misled. You were led to be. 
So if I come every Sunday and I speak about marriage until it becomes a sin that you are not married. <laughs> I can preach to an extent where it becomes a sin that you are not wearing a designer suit. Then it pressurizes you to believe that the blessing of the Lord is measured based on what I have and what is happening in my life. Or my relationship with God is measured on based on what I have or what is happening in my life. Then you come to a place where now you are misled on the character of God and how you deal with God. Then you realize that Hebrews 4 verse 16 will not apply to you. Let us go before the throne of God with boldness. Why become, why because now you become inferior. You become inferior as you go before the throne room of God. Yes, I'm, I'm approaching but I don't feel like I'm really, my relationship with God is at par because there are certain things that are not happening in my life. So when, when, when they asked for signs, these are the signs Jesus said. And I said the duty of a, believer, of a believer is to observe the signs. Am I communicating with somebody? Am I communicating with somebody? And I made it a vow. No matter how famous you can be, as long as the lines of your message, as long as your message does not bring and focus people to Christ and bring them to a consciousness of what shall be of them after their work and their deeds, there's no way we can be able to share platforms. We won't. You are a servant of God and I celebrate you but as far as platform is concerned I'm more responsible for the souls that I am to lead. Because the accountability of those souls and it becomes a very sensitive thing also. Because no matter who can be invited or given platform to preach it does not matter what they say, but as long as you are the leader, the responsibleness of those souls are on you. Because that is part of your work on earth. <laughs> so when you study the scriptures, you must know that it's a responsibility. And it is to be taken seriously. Praise God. Amen. So he says, do not be misled and do not be deceived. Deception is an art. It's an art. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. So when you are told not to be deceived, it means you are allowed to be deceived. Because ignorance is your responsibility. You are ignorant because you ignored. Yet the knowledge to make you wise was available. I hear what I'm saying. So when you hear someone say, no, uh, that, that, that I was prophesied and I was deceived. No. The false prophet was doing his duty to fulfill the prophecy of the Bible that false prophets would be there. <laughs> he, he was on point. <laughs> because if Judas did not betray Jesus, Jesus was not going to die. So he was on point following prophecy. So false prophets have to be there. You, you, 
You can't fight false prophets. It's a wrong doctrine to fight false prophets. They have to be there. They have to be there. But how will you be deceived when you know? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Am I communicating with somebody? Witchcraft is everywhere. Everywhere where there is deception, it's already witchcraft in operation. So you find it at work, in relationships, in marriages, on the pulpit, everywhere where there is deception, it is witchcraft. Because witchcraft is made up of two words. Witchcraft are two different people. There is witch and there is the craft. Okay. What if the craft is being practiced by a person who is not a witch? Because to which means to bend, to divert. So craft on itself, there is also what is called God craft. Yes, God says to Job, do you know the pathway of the lightning? You will call it and it would say at your service. Go read your Bible in the book of Job. You will call lightning and it will say at your service. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The, the craft can be learned, studied, and practiced. The, the gospel is about power. For I did not come with the enticing words of the wisdom of men, but with the demonstration. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Am I communicating with somebody? Am I communicating with somebody? I came with that demonstration of the what? Power. Power. So, that is why even Jesus, they said, you are doing all the things by the finger of what? Of Beelzebub. Because they believe that certain things cannot be done. The craft, the, there is the craft a way of doing things. Because remember, it's in, re, remember that the power of witchcraft is in words. Same is the power of believing in God. It is about creating. But on the other side, it's more on the hating side and illusions. Michael McGarren's about the Bible says, do not be deceived. So deception is a drive. And being deceived, it is also your fault. Because you are supposed to observe. The Bible says, do not be put to error. Do not be put to error. Error. Er error means functioning in a dysfunctional way. When someone stands on the altar and they, 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 they embrace homosexuality, no matter how you say it, it's error. Because according to God, he created two beings. There are certain things as far as the gospel is concerned that must never be tolerated. Never. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because once they are tolerated, you realize that when you read your Bible, the book of Samuel, do you know what the Bible says? The Bible says the sins of rebellion are as the sins of what? Witchcraft. 
A rebellious person can destroy a church to go and start another church saying that they are saving God. <laughs> While he's dividing the same kingdom. Now I'm trying to show you certain things. Error. Praise God. Amen. So that you know the believer is to observe. In verse number 5 of Matthew chapter number 24. Verse number 5, the Bible says, and false prophets are what? For many will come in my name. Many will come in my name. Mis misusing it. Misusing what? The name of the Lord. Misusing the name. These are signs. Jesus is still explaining of the signs. So they will misuse. I didn't know that you can use the name of Jesus. Mis, mi, meaning it can be used. Anything that can be used is a currency. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. Anything you can use is a currency. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. Praise the Lord. Am I communicating to somebody? Amen. So the Bible says, many shall misuse my name. They shall come and they shall misuse my name. Mm-hmm. Misusing it and appropriating the strength of the name which belongs to me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are, are you seeing what that 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 that's saying? That's how they will deceive many. They will come in his name, use his name, some for personal gain. So the, the name of Jesus is being used. While, while, while everything is being done, it is the name of Jesus. It's not another different name. Ha, 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 ha. It is the name of Jesus. But while the name of Jesus is being used, the Bible is saying that they are going to what? Misuse it. Some it will be for personal gain. You, you see people committing fornication. The name being used. <laughs> then the name being used. I, I've heard of a lot of people they would commit fornication after committing fornication, then a person will kneel down and start confessing. It's misuse in his name. Praise God. Praise God. Am I going to get in somebody? Not only from the pulpit of a preacher, worshippers misuse his name, believers misuse his name. Even Paul had to say, having the form of godliness but denying the power. Do you know if a believer wants to be rebellious, they will also use scriptures. Yes. If a believer wants to leave church, wants to fight a pastor, they will look for scriptures. They will look for scriptures. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So the Bible says, many shall come and say, I am Christ. And they shall deceive many. And we are seeing people giving each other names. Uh, I respect people's graces. I was listening to one short clip of someone who was speaking and saying, I am the, I'm the most sharpest prophet in the world. 
Yeah, that's serious confidence. But with the, with the knowledge that we are having, the Bible says we prophesy in part. We prophesy in what? We prophesy in part. And you can never be the most accurate. Because even the most accurate, there is a day when he says the Lord has hidden this from me. Am I communicating with somebody? Am I communicating with somebody? Even the most accurate can fail to interpret. Yes, that's right. He can fail to what? I remember at a time I was prophesying someone and I saw the name of their late father. Then as I was speaking, I was speaking as if this person is alive. Do you understand? So there is reception, interpretation, and delivery. That's prophecy. So you, you might receive well, but interpreting. I always tell people that you, you never in your life, never in your life, find someone who's praying and desiring from God. And you say, this one is a fake prophet. Because there is what we call weak prophecy. <laughs> and there are many factors that brings a person to have that kind of a delivery. But the Bible says many will come in my name. And he goes on further and he says, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. You shall hear of what? Now, these are the signs of the end time. And someone, you might be busy right now, you might be busy jumping, I receive. <laughs> Without understanding that, you might be in the last of the last days. And you might be in the end of the end times. So the wars are not the problem because Jesus says you, you hear the, 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 the wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be troubled for all these things must not um, must come to pass but it is not the end. So wars have to be there first before the end. There has to be wars. People have to fight. We are already seeing wars. Already. People are fighting. Nations are fighting. But Jesus says, this is not the end. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famine. So already, while we are still preaching, let us know that prophecy was already given. Even as we tell people that God is going to prosper you, let us know that prophecy was already given. There's going to be famine. There's going to be famine. Where people will plant on the ground, but the food will not be there. And the harvest will not be there. And I believe many will start to, to see the light at that time. I, I've realized that the, the stomach always awakens the mind. 
Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So there's going to be famine. And pestilences. There are going to be different pestilences and diseases as we know. A lot of them. And there are going to be earthquakes, specifically. Already we are seeing people are doing experiments while other people are seated and people are focused on many things. Some people are already doing experiments. There is a nation, I won't speak by name, they are digging the deepest hole in the universe. They want to reach to the end of the earth. They are, they are digging right now. We don't know after they dig what will happen to the earth. They are digging. Another nation, they are creating their own sun. We don't know the heat. While others are saying global warming, there is a country that is creating their own sun. Serious heat. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Hmm. I heard another nation, they sent a spaceship to the sun. I don't know what they want to explore there. So the Bible says that there shall be earthquakes. And these are the beginning of sorrow. The word sorrow is not a small word. And this script, if it's verse number eight. It's, it's standing on its own. And all these things are the beginning. So while you think you are in the frying pan, you are being told, no, you have not started. This is just the beginning. <laughs> no, this is Jesus speaking. If you do not have a thick skin, I don't know, you, you must fast track your, your going to heaven. Because the strong are the ones to survive. The reason why even economies are going down, we are going there. I always tell people, your faith is seen when you are going through challenges and tests. That is where we see your true faith. Ask Job. God tests you when there is nothing. When there is, you have, it's not an issue. It's easy to worship God when things are there. If you can't worship God when things are there, you are weak. You are weak. If things can divert you from God, you are weak. Otherwise, it should make God a priority. But when things are not there, that is where your faith is tested. That is where many will fall on the other side. So the Bible says, these are the beginning of sorrow. Somebody say sorrow. Sorrow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the next season, after all these things, the attack will now be on Christians. There's going to be a time where persecution and some of them be saying, oh, what was Jesus speaking about? What, what, does he know what he's speaking about? Listen to me. Listen to me. Do you know that right now there are priests, priests that are being executed? Yes. Priests that are being executed. Believers that are being executed. Hallelujah, Zambar. Amen. Hallelujah, Zambar. <laughs> First Corinthians chapter number 15. First 
1 Corinthians chapter number 15. Praise God. Are you there? Yes. Amen. Are you sure? Yes. yes. Let's read from verse 51. Uh, First Corinthians chapter number 15 uh, from verse uh, 51. Mm -hmm. Listen very carefully. Mm -hmm. I tell you a mystery, a secret truth decreed by God and previously hidden, but now revealed. Mm -hmm. We will not all sleep in death, but we all be completely changed. We will not all sleep in death. Meaning not everyone will die. But we will completely be changed. That's me right there. <laughs> you have confidence. We will completely be what? Changed. Read, read it, 52. Uh, verse 52. Mm -hmm. In a moment, mm -hmm. in the twinkling of an eye, mm. at the sound of the last trumpet, mm. for a trumpet will sound, and the dead who believed in Christ will be raised imperishable. And we will be completely changed, changed, wondrously and transformed. Listen, the Bible says that at the twinkling of an eye, the twinkling of an eye, do you know how to twinkle? You do like this. The Bible says in a twinkling, the speed of the twinkling of an eye, the Bible says that we will be changed. The, the, the speed of a twinkling of an eye, the Bible says that we will be changed. At the sound of a trumpet, oh God. Hear me, if you hear the sound, it means you have not gone. If you hear the sound, it means you have not gone. There is so much sensitivity as far as aspects of the rapture are concerned. Because there is a difference between rapture and the second coming. Rapture, they are going to, when Christ comes, those that believed in Christ are going to meet with him. So it does not matter it's an uncle, it's a sister, if they don't believe in Christ, they won't be there. It does not matter how you interceded for them, it does not matter how you prayed for them, or how you loved them. If they did not receive him. They will not be there. Yeah. They will not be there. They will not be there. And it becomes a painful experience. Because this is where it gets serious. Because it can be that while I'm preaching or while I'm starting the service, the mic will just fall. Because the Bible says in the twinkling of an eye. And if you remain, you have remained. <laughs> the 
That's when you understand what Armageddon is. And those will be the seasons where the Bible says that sorrow will begin. Now, I'm, I'm, you see? Sorrow will begin. Because while the wars are happening, when sorrow will really begin, it's when Christ will meet with his people when the trumpet blows. And the sounding of a trumpet, it needs people that are descending. Because the Bible says that at the sound of a trumpet, how do you hear it and if you can't hear? How, how will you be able to be receptive to it if you can't hear it? Because the trumpet is sounded in the spirit. Not in the physical. So as long as your spirit is not sensitive, are you hearing what I'm saying? There is no extra time. It's not sports. If he sounds the trumpet now, there is no extra time or delay. I know that there is a second batch. Uh -uh. Once you miss it, you miss it. So that is why when it comes to the aspect of the gospel, true evangelism must not be on the basis of fear. It must be on the basis of truth. And also, deception must not be covered by love. Because in the aspect of preaching love, many have been deceived. And they have not been told the truth. They have not. I'm one person since God called me, when it comes to the things of God, even, even those that grew up with me know. There, we are like we are in orphans. There is no special treatment. I hear what I'm saying. I hear what I'm saying. Amen. Have, you ever, have you ever seen that when you are used by God? Many people that complain that you don't, you don't pray for them are people that are your relatives. Do you know why? Hmm? They would want that prayer from a certain level. And the anointing does not operate that way. I was meditating in the morning and Jesus spoke a very striking statement. His mother and his brothers came. And when they came, they wanted to draw him out of a meeting. And he spoke a very bold, painful statement that can break relationships. <laughs> he said, my brothers and my sisters are those that hear my word. He, he, was not, he, he was not speaking from this perspective. So in a twinkling of an eye, there's going to be a trumpet. And the Bible says that will be transformed and there is another body that we shall wear. In the spirit, there is a body. So at, at, at that time, at, at that time, you already know where you are going. And many people say, "Ah, so me, I'll go to Gain." No, 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 no. That one is the beginning. Is the first leg, first half. Gain, the first half. 
Hell. No. Don't be hell. Don't be afraid about hell. It's the first half. The Bible says, Hades and hell shall be taken and shall be thrown into the lake of fire. So, <laughs> so if you think hell is what? And the torment of those that will go there will not start when they go there. It will start when the devil is loosed and put there. That is where the biggest torment will be. And the timeline is eternity. Is eternity. And, and remember the enemy also tried to bring this aspect, the enemy tried to bring an aspect where we had a lot of people write books about the hell. And there was even a lady who sometimes wrote a book and it sold a lot of copies all over the world. Was it Baxter or something? Who wrote a book? He was too young. <laughs> it's now in the archives. That is the right arm, the left arm, whatever, whatever, whatever. The Bible says the hell and the Hades will be taken. Yeah, thrown into the lake of fire. And one of the things you realize when you read your Bible about the rich men and Lazarus, the Bible says that Lazarus died and the rich man died. And all of them, they went to their designated places. Now, this is Jesus speaking. And do not play with certain things when Jesus speaks because if you read your Bible, you will see that Jesus spoke more of hell than heaven. <laughs> Go read your Bible. Jesus spoke more of what hell than heaven. So he's trying to make it to be observant so that you live your life careful. That when you feel like doing that thing, you understand why David says, your way is I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against you. You just remember this flesh that is causing me to sin will not go with me to that place. The Bible says, listen, please make this clear. The Bible says the rich man went to heaven. Lazarus, the rich man went to hell. Lazarus went to heaven. And the Bible says that the rich man saw Lazarus Meaning your senses will be waking. You'll be able to recognize your brother, your sister, your mother, your son, your daughter. You, you see where now the torment begins. Where the torment begins. The rich man saw Lazarus and recognized this is Lazarus. Uh, I'll, I'll really sit down and break down on this. Which means the memory will not be erased. And you get to a place where in heaven, the, do, do you know what happens in the spirit? The, the spirit knows how to trigger memories. Even, even things you thought you have forgotten, if entities in the spirit or God wants you to remember, he knows how to bring back that memory. So when, 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 before we even talk about judgment day, So the Bible says the moment it happens, the saints will ascend and they will meet with Christ and there will be a period of what? Three and a half years. There, there are going to be wars. These wars you are seeing are not wars. 
And I hope if, the, if these are the O's and they're happening, I hope rapture has not yet happened. But the Bible says, <laughs> the moment the O's are happening, that's the season of rapture. And there's going to be three and a half years of serious wars that the person who's going to rise there has to be a politician and has to be religious because nations will be torn apart. There are going to be religious wars, kingdom wars, warfare wars. And there are going to be fights, sons against fathers, fathers against sons. So the rich man saw Lazarus and he was able to speak. And do you know what the rich man said? Can you send Lazarus to bring me water? No, the senses are there and the emotions are there. Test is felt in, heaven, in, in hell. And for him to ask for water from heaven, it means it is there. Uh, but we already know the Bible says that we shall feast in heaven. So food will be there. But it seems like in heaven, either it's limited or it's not provided. And by that time, it might be that I'll be looking at my grandfather while he's in there. And he's calling your name, asking for water, but you can't do anything. And this is eternity. Someone you might have had a chance to tell them to receive Christ, or you told them, and they refused. You told them, and it's a sign that we will be able to see, oh, there they are. There is a way, spiritually. Someone will say, how? How did Adam name whales and sharks? That's the dimension we'll be operating in. There won't be deliverance. They know this thing. We are casting demons here on earth. There, there are people that will be staying with the demons. Now, at, at that point, <laughs> at, that, at that point, you really do, there is now what you call demonic possession where they do what they want. These things we are calling molestations, they, it will be happening for eternity. Certain people will be facing it for eternity. Where you be hurt, you are healed. You be hurt, you are healed. You will burn, you feel the fire. It, it is eternal. Someone <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Are you blessed? Yes. Are you <laughs> Are you blessed? Yes, we blessed. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So one has to grow is your observance. You have to grow for your spiritual life. It's, it's, if, if, if it is to pray, it must not be about being seen by people. And we are at that age. Just looking at it. I made up my mind. Even in this season and wherever I'm going now, I'm going to make sure that I can't leave my loved ones behind. I thank God for those before. We can't leave those that are coming after. We can't. And one one of the things about the things of the Lord is it, it it's like a job. Yet there is reality. I can't be seeing my maybe young sisters. 
Maybe I'm the one who will be on the other side or they will be the one on the other side. Because remember when you read your Bible, the, the rich man, he saw Lazarus, he was feeling thirst. But the biggest thing that surprises me is he asked and he was concerned. Means his emotions were weak. And he says, please send a word to my brothers. Do you see his concern? No, this is Jesus speaking and it's a message he's sending. The first evangelism and the biggest evangelism are those you are calling your loved ones. Because that will be the greatest and biggest pain. I remember before my brother passed away, he got very sick. And as he was growing up, as all of us were being forced to carry, forced to go to church, forced. But as people grow, they make their own decisions. But at that time, even my mother said, if, if you don't receive Jesus now, I'm not coming to see you. And that was true. He had to receive Jesus by force. And he came out from the hospital straight to church. He was now preaching. It has to be a reality. Because that will be the biggest pain on the other side. And I believe this brings you to a place where you see that it is very expensive to be bitter for a person. Very expensive. Very expensive for someone to cause you to sin. Or anything on earth to cause you to sin. You can't compromise because of money. It's just a paper project. At what expense? The soul. The soul. At what expense? Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Am I communicating to somebody here? Yes. Am I communicating to somebody here? Yes. All right. First Corinthians chapter number three. From verse eighteen. First Corinthians uh, chapter number three from verse 13. Mm -hmm. Each one's work will be clearly shown uh -huh. for what it is for, uh, for the day of judgment. All right. Every man's work will be shown or will be manifested. Every man's work. Ima imagine after preaching for 15 years and at that, at that time it, it just comes. But you know what happens in the spirit? One of the things here on earth that is where we speak. In the spirit they don't speak, they communicate. If you have ever had an encounter with an angel you will understand. Those things they don't speak. They look at you, you understand what they are saying. You answer without opening up your mouth. Because the answer is drawn from that depth of your spirit. So, so at that time, and God maybe will show my video there where I'm preaching and I've preached, I've preached, I'll calculate, I've preached maybe for 15 years and the Lord will show them and say, okay, 15 years, but for the for twelve years, you were not preaching in these ways. This was this was man, not Christ. So let's remove this thing. You are left with two. 
each one's work. What are your works? At that point, it will be a TV. What are your works? <laughs> this is a point where you reach where fame does not matter. It doesn't. Because at that time, that thing won't matter. Each man's work will be shown, reviewed, manifested. And Christ will be standing there. And there will be wounds in his hands. So there are no negotiations. You, you already died. You already died. And you, you, you can't do things that remind him of his wounds. And he can't die again. His blood do not be spilled twice. That's why the Bible says that if any man wants to follow me, let him carry his cross. You can't live and walk in this journey with God, living, it, living a life without rules, living a life without deep discipline. It's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. If you can follow God and do what you want, there is something wrong. There is something that is wrong. So each man's work will be what? Manifested. Uh -huh. um, each one's work will be clearly shown mm -hmm. for what it is. For the day of judgment will disclose it. Mm. Because it is, it is to be revealed with fire. All right. It will be revealed with fire. And the fire will test the quality and character and uh, worth of each person's work. Hey. Repeat that one. Repeat that one. And the fire, and will, the fire test will test the quality. The quality. And character. The character. And worthy of each person's work. And worthy of each person's work. The fire. Ah, on, on this one, whatever you are doing on the side and hidden on, on this day. Oh my God. Oh my God. That you were standing here and jumping fire. There are certain things behind that will be put like bam. The character, the quality. So, oh, that was just a show. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Somebody say it shall be revealed. It shall be rebuilt. Somebody say, it shall be reviewed. It shall be rebuilt. Mm -hmm. Read it. 14. Mm -hmm. If any person's work mm. which he has built. If any person's work he, which he has he built. built mm -hmm. On this foundation. On this foundation who is Christ. That is an outcome of his effort. Mm -hmm remains and survives the test, you will receive a reward. Ladies and gentlemen, which means there are going to be rewards in heaven. Awards! There will be a prize-giving day in heaven. There was a vision before of people being given crowns. And church members were gathered. And the biggest crown was given to a bold lady. Because she was the one who was holding everything in the spirit. With her prayers daily. The biggest crown did not go to the pastor who saw the vision. He saw the vision going to the bold lady. There's going to be a prize giving day. 
And prizes are not given in secret. That's why the Bible says we shall shine differently in heaven. Some shall, some shall shine like the, there is a small insect. In my language, we call it Titan. That shines at the back at night. I would say some shall shine like that thing. Some shall shine like the star. Some shall shine like the moon. Some shall shine like the sun. There is going to be categories of shining and glory. Even in heaven. At that time. So the Bible says there shall be reward. 15, what does it say? Chapter 15 of First Corinthians uh, 3. Mm -hmm. But if any person's work is bent up by the chest, mm. he will suffer the loss of, the, of his reward. Mm -hmm. Yet he himself will be saved. Mm. But only as one who has barely escaped through fire. I repeat that scripture. But if any person's if work, any person's work is, bent up is bent up by the test, by the test, he will suffer the loss. He will suffer loss of the reward. Of the reward. Yet he himself. Yet he himself will be saved. Will be saved. But only as. Uh -huh. One who has barely escaped through fire. Are you listening to this? So th there are people that will be there, but they won't be having a reward. The same way we can have members and numbers in church, there are people that will just be there to add that number. But they won't be having a reward. They won't be having a crown. They won't be having the glory. I believe that is the time when, when people are feasting in heaven. They are not at the high temple. <laughs> because if Jesus says that people are going to stay, there are going to be rooms, it means even the houses will be different. <laughs> But I'm trying to show you that it does not end here. Whatever that men are doing here, they'll carry it along. They'll carry it along. Let's go, let's end at Revelations. Revelations chapter number 20. Verse 12. You read on yourself the whole of Revelations. Uh, ish. Hi. Read verse number 7. We'll go to 12. Revelation uh, 20, verse uh, 7. Oh, you can read it from the beginning. From verse 1 of chapter 20. Yes. Revelation 20, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And then I saw an angel descending from heaven, mm -hmm. holding the key of the epsi. Mm. Epsi. Apsi. Apsi. It's grammar. <laughs> Um, the bottomless pit, the bottomless pit, and a great chain was in his hand. Mm -hmm. Verse two. And he overpowered and laid hold of the dragon, mm -hmm. the old serpent of the primeval times, mm. who is the devil and Satan, mm. and bound him securely. He bound the devil securely. 
for a thousand years. For a thousand years. Meaning, meaning, meaning there is a time when the devil is going to be in prison for how many years? Some people will be alive. Still burning. For that thousand years. Because after that season, there's no death. Mm-hmm. Read it. Uh, verse 3. And the angel hauled him into the uh, abyss mm-hmm. and closed it and sealed it above him, mm. preventing his escape or, sec- or resequel. Mm-hmm. So that he would no longer deceive and seduce the nations. So that he would no longer deceive nations. Which shows you there is going to be a season. Are you seeing it? There is a season when nations will still be existing. But Satan won't be there. So there won't be a chance to say, no, the devil deceived me. It will be your decisions. Uh -uh. Satan was not there. You did it. You did it yourself. Praise God. So for a thousand years you'll be bound and you won't deceive nations anymore. Until thousand years you'll be fulfilled. And after that he must be loosed for a little season. He must be loosed for a little season. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them. And judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. And which had not worshipped the beast neither his image, and neither received the mark of the beast on their forehead or on their hands, and lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. So these ones are people that will be left at that time for a thousand years. You remember the story where people will go to the sea and the sea will refuse to, to swallow people. And they'll be crying, please see, swallow me, and the sea will not kill people. This is the season. So it says, Blessed and holy is he who had, who had part in the first resurrection. Read that one, verse number six. Blessed, happy, <laughs> prosperous to be admired. And holy is the person who takes part in the first resurrection. Mm -hmm. Over these, the second death, Mm -hmm. which is eternal separation from God. Eternal separation from God. The lake of fire Mm. has no power or authority, Mm -hmm. but there will be priests of God. Mm -hmm and of Christ, and they will reign with him a thousand years. All right, yes. Uh, Verse 7. And when the thousand years are completed, Satan will be released from his prison. Eight. And will come out of out to deceive and mislead the nations which are in the four corners of the earth. Mm, Four corners of the earth. Including Gog and Magog. Mm -hmm. To gather them together for the war. Mm. Their number is like the sand of the seashore. Mm. Nine. And they swamped up over the broad plain of the earth and surrounded the camp of the saints and the beloved city, Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. But fire came down from heaven and consumed them. Mm. Ten. And the devil who had deceived them was hauled into the lake of fire and 
burning, a burning brimstone, mm. where the beast, antichrist, and false prophets are also. Mm -hmm. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. All right, so we have three things that to explain sometime the beast, the false prophet, and Satan. So there is a lake of fire. Not false prophets. There will be a false prophet. <laughs> there will be a beast. So those two things, don't forget them. Mm -hmm. Verse 11. Mm. And I saw a great white throne and... Uh, I saw a great white throne. And whom and him who was sitting upon it, from whose uh, presence, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away. And no place was found for them. Mm. For the heaven and earth are passing away. Mm -hmm. Twelve. And I saw the dead, mm. the great and the small, mm. standing before the throne. Standing before the throne. And books were opened. My God. Then another book was opened, mm. which is the book of life. Mm. And the dead were judged mm. according to what they had done as written in the books. That is everything done while on earth. Mm. 13. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And the dead and the hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Listen, hell. By this time there are people that are already in hell. Hell will deliver them up. Those people that fell in the sea, covered by the sea, the Bible said the sea will vomit them out at this time. Am I communicating somebody? Amen. Am I communicating somebody? Amen. Am I communicating somebody? Amen. Let me repeat again. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. Now, we are talking about the grave. The grave and hell also give up. The sea, the grave, and death will give up people that are in them. So there are, there are people that are already burning. <laughs> hell will give them up so that they will be put into... Okay, let's, let, let's read. Will give them up and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So while others are crying about hell, there is a time. Hell will say now this matter is bigger. Those that were burning in hell will be judged before they are thrown into the lake of fire. Outside the torment of hell, there's going to be judgment again. Fifteen. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Meaning after the death and the hell, there is a time when people a book will be opened. Yeah, me, ladies and gentlemen, there is a book. There are books, but there is a book. There are books that are in heaven about the works you have done, the good things you have done. The judgments we spoke about here, I'll categorize them. There is a judgment that will bring rewards. That has to do with works. You might be saved on that one. But there is another judgment that is about a names written in the book. 
Because there are some that have good works, but their names are not written. There are some people that are good, but their names are not written. So on the names written, that is where it begins. This has to bring you to a place where your heart for souls has to pass. As long as the name is not written in the book of life, it does not matter who you are, where you are, how much years you lived, what you have done. We have we are past the rewards. We are now into the name of the book of life. And the Bible says, whosoever whose name, meaning that there are some who has escaped on all these things, but they will miss it on their name, not written. Because the Bible says, whosoever whose name is read, not written in the book of life shall be thrown into the lake of fire. Meaning some of them might have escaped the hell, but they will not escape the lake of fire. And the lake of fire, like what we said, hell itself will be thrown. Meaning hell is even smaller than the lake of fire. The sea will vomit people. Because at that time, people have already been transformed. It's now time for judgment. This brings you to an understanding that no matter what can be said, no matter the extent in which we can preach, there has to be an awareness. And no matter in the journey in which we preach, I always tell people, I do it as a form of serving God. It's a work on itself. It's a work on itself. That time you were coming to church and you were not serious on it, it's a work on itself. It's a work. Every deed, the Bible says, that in that time, in that time, every deed, there is where every deed is written. We need to sit down and do a Bible study on the books in heaven. Praise God. Praise God. I believe God is giving you understanding. As you live your life on earth, let your life be founded on understanding that outside and after all is said and done, there is a future of this aspect of Christ. That is the reason why Christ was brought and that is the reason why God gave us Christ. I was preaching at another crusade. And I saw a vision. That is what made me, made me to start loving going to outskirts. Because when I saw that vision, it was Christ and he was showing me his hands. And a word suddenly came from my heart. He did not die in vain. But do you know you can live a life that will make him seem as if he died in vain? I love it because we are living in a liberal world where everyone has got an opinion. But as far as the future of our souls and spirit are concerned, there are no negotiations on the other side. There are celebrities we love that will not make it. There are pastors we love that will not make it. There are sons and daughters in the Lord that I might love that might not make it. That is why our Lord says that salvation is personal. So we are going to pray.
thank you. We exalt your name in the name of Jesus. May your name be glorified. My Father, we come because we are your sons and we are your daughters. Thank you for reminding us the essence of our existence. Thank you for reminding us and giving us a compass point of how to live. Holy Spirit, remind us every day that this earth is not our final residence. In the name and the blood of Jesus. Remind us each day that there is a day we shall escape from this body. So let not the body control our lives. And that we may not fulfill the desires of the flesh. In the name that is above every other name. Mary God, I pray. And we give our lives. And I say let my life be a sacrifice on your altar. In the name and the blood of Jesus. Let my life be a sacrifice on your altar. Let my life be a sacrifice on your altar. In the name and the blood of Jesus. In the name and the blood of Jesus. Let our lives, our deeds, our walk, our daily lives, our words, our confessions, conversations, let them be pleasing in your sight. 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 I pray in the name and the blood of Jesus. Mary Father, in Jesus' mighty name, we pray for our loved ones. Holy Spirit, convict them. We plead, we beg. Father, we pray for our brothers. Pray for our sisters. Pray for our mothers. Pray for our fathers. Pray for our sons. Pray for our daughters. Pray for our wives. Pray for our husbands. The Spirit of the Lord convicts them. Convicts them. May we not be saved as us only. Convict them. Convict them. Touch their hearts. Soften their hearts. Visit them in dreams and visions. Convict them. Convict them. Convict them. May they not miss the flight. Convict them. Convict them. Convict them. Bend their hearts, bend their hearts, bend their hearts. Show them the way. Show them the way. We intercede. And Father, with broken hearts, we give our tears as a sacrifice on your altar. Father, in the name and the blood of Jesus, bring them to you. Bring our loved ones to you. Bring them 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 to you. Holy Spirit, you are the one who convicts the hearts of men. Bring back our brothers. Bring back our sisters. Our grandmothers and grandfathers, bring them, bring them, bring them, bring them, bring them, bring them. Any distraction and anything that the enemy might use to detract, to derail us from the path that will lead us to eternal our life. Father, remove those distractions. Amen. Remove those distractions. Amen. Remove those distractions. We desire to live in that day. We desire to experience the glory of your majesty on that day with our beloved ones as we feast in the new Jerusalem. 
We desire to be family on earth and to be family on the other side. Spirit of the living God, even this moment, touch every beloved, every relative, yes. every friend, wherever they are. Amen. Bring them to you. Yes. Bring them to you. Bring them to you. Bring them to you. Bring them to you. We surrender ourselves to you, Lord. <laughs> Let this be our confession. Let this be our heart cry every day. We have given ourselves to you. Apostle Paul says, walk in the spirit so that you may not fulfill the desires of the flesh. Yes. Father, give us the strength not to follow the desires of the flesh. May our spirits be energized and be empowered. May we live according to the Spirit. May our lives become a testament. May our lives become the message. That where we come preach with our mouths, may our lives be the message. That will bring many to you. In the name of Jesus. Jesus name. Thank you.